Anyways, so let's talk about, there's three levels of consecration I want to talk about, and the goal, the ultimate goal for today, again, all these notes I put on uh, the Google Drive if you want them, exclamation mark notes, like Haney did a little while ago, and, uh, and then you can get those notes, or you can join the Discord, and the link is in there as well. Plus, you can do things on Discord, like ask questions, and uh, people, including myself, will answer them. We've been we have a nice Discord. We have a really nice Discord. And then this will be up on uh, this will be up on YouTube later. So if you want to to come back later and watch it on YouTube, you can do that as well. So we're gonna start with conservation of momentum. And I have some demonstrations, pretty much just uh, just one demonstration that we're gonna use for everything. <laughs> um, but nevertheless, uh, <clears throat> and this is where we're going to start. So first, let's start with the intro physics, okay? So this might be something that you see uh, when, um, you know, you first get start your physics class. This is like introductory mechanics. And we're using the book Knight, Randall Knight. This is the one that I teach from. Maybe here it would be okay. And we want to talk about <clears throat> one-dimensional momentum, Okay. So let's talk about forces during a collision. So when you have inter when you have a, a forces during a collision, you're going to have um, exactly yeah conservation of momentum. So you're going to have well actually it's m1 plus m, m uh, p1 plus p2 initial is going to equal p1 plus p2 final. That's kind of the goal. So if we talk about the force on one, so that means the force of this of the second uh, of the second object on the first object, then we can say that it's just the change in momentum over time, right? Everybody has seen this. They know that like, and we'll say P1 for the momentum of one. Everybody has seen this shirt that says, oh, may the D, DP over DT or D row over DT be with you, right? May the force be with you. So everybody knows force this way in introductory physics. And then you could do the same thing, but now it's an interaction force. So if we were to, you know, try to mathematically express the force on object two, we might say DP2 on DT. Okay. Now, uh, then we can rewrite this and say, well, what happens if we want to talk about the total force, right? These are both just follow the laws of superposition, so we can add everything together. And we might say dp1 over dp2 uh, plus dp, or I'm sorry, dt, excuse me, excuse me, dp2 over dt is equal to f on 1 minus f on 2. And since these are interaction forces, and this is a closed system, this is going to equal zero. Okay? So let's rewrite this left-hand side as d over dt over the sum of both of the forces p1 plus p2, where this is the total sum of p. So now we know that the total change with respect to time of the momentum is just going to be zero. Which means if we add up all of the momentums, then this is just going to equal some constant. <clears throat> and the total momentum equals to some constant means no matter where you look at it, uh, where you look at it, there's going to be the same momentum. Conservation of momentum, right there. So let's look at a couple demonstrations really quickly. Um, or just one demonstration, I should say, right now. There you go. Now. If I take these two pendulums and I take this one out and it bounces, it transfers the velocity. These are the same mass. Now, there's a little bit of rotational problems just because this is not the most stable thing. Um, but if I take this uh, golf ball and I release it, it's going to transfer all of its energy, all of its momentum, excuse me, its momentum to the other golf ball and then backwards and forwards. They're both roughly the same size, and the momentum has to stay the same. So as it transfers, uh, so it will basically transfer its velocity from one to the other. That's the takeaway from this, right? Now let's upgrade. Let's upgrade to our next level of understanding. <clears throat> and let's talk about Lagrange mechanics, OK? So how does one talk about Lagrange mechanics for the conservation of momentum? Well, uh, we're going to use. Uh, LM for Lagrange mechanics, and this is from Taylor. Now, I have a full video on this that's much, much more in depth about Lagrange mechanics. So you can go and check that out on the YouTube exclamation mark YT if you're interested in that, if you're interested. Um, 
but we're just going to kind of briefly summarize it, and then if you want a deeper dive, you can always go look at that video. But let's see here. So if we want to have a bunch of particles, and we're going to talk about translating them through space to a different spot, okay? And this doesn't have to be exact. You know, this one's tall. You know, this one's in this part of space. This one's in this part of space. This is a three-dimensional thing. So we'll call this one R1, and that's going to translate to R1 plus, oops, plus some small variation of, of variation of distance. Okay, and then this is going to be R2, R3, and they're all going to have the small epsilon that gets they get varied by that epsilon in dis, in that dif, distance. So yeah, so they're all going to be varied by some small difference, right? And the, the goal is that the potential energy should be unaffected, right? So we ultimately want a small variation in the potential energy to be equal to zero. And this small variation is going to be given by this epsilon naught. And this is translational symmetry. So we're moving it through space, and we want to make sure that the potential, as we move it through space, is going to be the same in a closed system. Okay? Now, um, we know that if we're just translating it through space, the kinetic energy has to be z zero. Right? Because what's the kinetic energy made out of? Well, up to this point, you're really only learning that the kinetic energy is relationship between the uh, energy and the velocity, uh, with you know mass as some extra term in there. And the velocity <coughs> is going to be uh, the same. We're just translating it in space. We're not changing the velocity. We're just taking a particle, we're picking it up out of the system and putting it down somewhere else. Same velocity, same everything else as before. So. If this is zero and we want this to be zero, then we want, coincidentally, the Lagrangian to be zero because the Lagrangian is just simply the, uh, you know, the difference between t and u. So, um, how do we find if the Lagrangian is zero? Well, let's talk about the Lagrangian. Uh, <coughs> As, uh, the or as the derivative, so this is also going to be equal to, uh, and we can say it's the variation, because this is only going to be like the extra pieces of the Lagrangian. This is already taken care of. Then when you add this on, you're just sort of adding uh, the variation, and this is what we did in detail in that video if you want to see more detail. Um, I, the sum over all i from 1 to n of the small variation of the Lagrangian with respect to a point in space. And this is, again, equal to zero. So if this is equal to zero and the small variation is a non-zero variation, or else this whole thing is trivial, that doesn't make any sense, we want to make sure that this translation through space is a real number. So this derivative with respect to the position has to be, um, has to be zero. Okay? Summing over all of those derivatives of the Lagrangian. <clears throat> what does that mean? Wow, what's the derivative of the Lagrangian? This is going to come into play later on. The derivative of the Lagrangian with respect to a point in space, or I should say a bunch of point in spaces, alpha, is going to be equal to the change with respect of time of the derivative of the Lagrangian with respect to the velocity. This comes from the Euler-Lagrange equations. Okay? So from the Euler-Lagrange equations, <coughs> we find this to be true. This is just the momentum. This right here is just the momentum. If that's the momentum, then this is just going to be, remember I said that all of these have to be zero, so we can say that this is equal to zero. Okay? This is just has to be d dt of the momentum, okay? of the total momentum. So again, here we found d dt of the total momentum is equal to zero. Here, we find out that this relationship is equal to zero. This is part of the Euler-Lagrange equation. The Euler-Lagrange equation consists of this term and this term. This is the change with respect to time of the, poten of the momentum. So therefore, the change with respect to time of the total momentum is zero. Excuse me, zero. And we get, that's supposed to be a derivative. That's just sloppy. Uh, and then we get back to our conservation of momentum. OK, cool. Now, excellent, excellent, excellent. This is what you learn in Lagrange mechanics, maybe second, third year. Now let's get to the quantum mechanical part, OK? Quantum mechanical part. And for this one, we're following Townsend. OK. Now the quantum mechanical part's a little bit stranger. We didn't really introduce a Hamiltonian, but Hamiltonian will actually introduce at the end 
Um, this is not a traditional order of learning these things, but this is the traditional order of learning the conservation of momentum. And then we're going to do the traditional order of learning about conservation of energy. But you need to know some things about the conservation of energy to understand this last thing. So for now, you'll just have to understand that I'm going to say there's a Hamiltonian that exists in, a con in uh, quantum mechanics Excuse me, that exists as the sum of all energy. Okay? And then I'll show you how that happens later. But for now, just believe me when I say there's a sum a Hamiltonian which exists as the sum of all energy. And we can think of the hydrogen atom, which is a very popular one, where we'll add up the two. Uh, it's a two-body problem, right? A hydrogen atom is a two-body problem that exists with a proton and an electron. I will show you the, where the Hamiltonian kind of comes from, uh, but that's not until we get to the conservation of energy, which we're just not there yet. OK, so Hamiltonian. Cool, hydrogen atom, cool, potential. Let's talk about the potential. The potential of the hydrogen atom is the uh, charge squared divided by the distance uh, by the, the distance we have. Well, we have to do the, the radii uh, uh, away, right? <clears throat> so uh, from the two bodies. So the two body state, uh, we can write it as R1 comma R2, which is just a tensor, uh, tensor product, which you guys should have seen. Uh, if you have taken quantum mechanics, I should write it down here, I guess. R1 tensored with R2. Okay, so that's just the tensor product of the state. It's really just a way where you can talk about two states at the same time. Um, but yeah, so we have this tensor state of radii uh, away from uh, some origin. So then we could write, let's just draw it pictorially, right? So we have two radii. Uh, I, guess I need more space, I guess. Dagnabbit. <clears throat> okay, so we have two radii, one R2, one R1. There's a distance between them, which is going to be R2 minus R1. And then we'll have some translation vector that takes it like this, where now our, R1, our R2 minus R1 is out here. And this translation vector is going to be A. So it's possible to understand the translation vector as the following. Some translation, um, and we're just going to do translation 1, which will only act on the radii 1. See, there's an A for 1 and an A for 2, but translating both of them is what we really want to show. Won't change, won't change the Hamiltonian. R1 uh, acting on R1 and R2, but again, this is only the translation that affects R1. So that's going to be you know, some e to the i, and then p dot a. This is an effect of the Hamiltonian. Of course, this has to be an eigenvalue, right? Uh, and then r1, r2. We did it. We did it. OK, so cool. Now, uh, we have this translation thing, and there's going to be some eigenvalue out front, and we're going to have uh, you know, some trans, uh, translation operator. Now, the goal of all symmetry things is if we can get this translation operator to uh, commute with the Hamiltonian, the that's really bit. good. Weird. So we have to get to that point. Helion, thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Um, and we do want this to communicate, or to, to uh, commute, commute with the Hamiltonian. So if we apply both of them, you can imagine seeing that uh, there's going to be two of these eigenvectors, or eigenvalues, excuse me. And this is just going to um, add by a factor of a momentum, right? This is P1, because we're talking about the, the momentum of one, of one, of the translation of one, right? So that's what we're talking about here. And so you can imagine summing up both if you're looking at the notes, exclamation mark notes, if you'd like to follow along. Uh, you can find them under Sunday's streams in that folder. <coughs> um, and you can see the TA and T, T1 and T2 together are just this eigenvalue that we get where it's e to the i and then the total momentum dotted with a over h bar. Why does that matter? Well, if we can, so this is a total momentum, right? There's a few steps to show you that the total momentum co commutes with the potential. Okay. It obviously commutes with the kinetic because all these are is if you Taylor expand this, you're going to get some potentials down below. This is a good point to, to note that this is a summary. <laughs> this is not something that you should understand off the first, like when you, as soon as you like look at this for the first time that you should understand. This is a summary for someone who's seen quantum mechanics, who spent a fair amount of time in quantum mechanics. 
to remember how conservation of, of momentum works in quantum mechanics. I don't expect anybody who's never seen this to know this, OK? Um, <clears throat> so anyways, I just wanted to state that. So then you can tailor expand this and see, obviously, that the, that the it's so obvious, right? Um, that the momentum will commute with this translation operator. And then uh, Townsend does take a second to show that the potential commutes with the uh, translation operator. If the potential and the kinetic both commute with the translation operator, then the Hamiltonian commutes with the translation operator. And we get this H T A T what? Oh, T one A, T two A, right? And this is gonna be equal to zero. Okay? Now if this is true, okay, and we know that T A, T1 and T2 commute with the momentum or the kinetic terms, then they should also commute with the total momentum, which makes this true. So now if this commutes, we have one more step to do. Then we find out the, the, fin the final step, okay, the final truth in this whole thing is that D Expectation value of momentum dt is okay. I don't have enough room. <laughs> I tried. I didn't. It didn't work. So we're gonna have to come back up here. <laughs> I tried so hard to get this all on one board, but it, it just it was it's not happening. Uh, if this is if this is true, then we find that the the change with the expectation value of momentum is equal to one over h bar uh, times uh, psi the state psi acted on by this commutator uh, and the state psi. This is, a, this is a, 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 something you learn kind of towards the beginning of your quantum mechanics, mechanics class, that if this is true, then this is true. And this, for momentum, this is true in general. If you have the expectation value of an observable, then this is true in general. I think for certain things like vector potentials, you have to add another turn on. Turn term, excuse me, onto the end of that, but this is not a vector potential, this is just momentum. This is zero for momentum, which makes our change with respect to time over the expected, vo expected value of momentum equal to zero. So here we have the change to the total momentum equal to zero. The total momentum is a constant. Here we have the change of the of the change of momentum is equal to zero. The total momentum, as summed up right here, right, is equal to zero. Okay? And here we have the expectation value of the momentum with change with respect to time equal to zero. And there it is. All three levels of learning, first year, second, third year, fourth year of your undergraduate of conservation of momentum. <laughs>